Today I want to share something with you that I believe is truly significant. It has to do with your head and your heart. Now often, after someone says or does something foolish, you hear him or her say, I'm sorry, I wasn't thinking. Now this is often the exact truth. They let their heart guide them. In other words, their emotions took control. My emotions are wonderful, but the heart cannot be allowed to cloud the brain. And this is why God gave us minds to control our hearts. In Jeremiah chapter 17 we read that the heart is deceitful above all things. So we have to be very careful about letting our heart and emotion have too much freedom. And that's why we're instructed in the Bible to let our minds lead. In Romans 12 verse 2 we read, Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing and perfect will. So the key to understanding God's will for your life is to allow Him to renew your mind. 2 Timothy 4 verse 5 says something very similar. It says, keep your head in all situations. Again, your head should control your heart. But we are human and that's often easier said than done, especially when life gets tough. When your emotions begin to freak out, then your brain needs evidence to keep your heart under control. And that's why God has given us the Bible. The Bible is filled with that kind of evidence. Look at it this way. Imagine you and your friends are hiking in beautiful South America on a hot day. And you come to a peaceful, cool river and you all decide to swim. But just before you jump into the river, somebody sees a sign and the sign says, Danger, Piranha. Suddenly, nobody wants to swim anymore. What has saved you? The truth has saved you. No matter how much your heart wanted to swim before that time, your mind just took control. Your mind actually changed the desire of your heart. The truth saved you. Or, as Jesus says, the truth set you free. John 10.10 10 teaches that Satan's only goal for your life, for your life, is to steal, kill and destroy. And his greatest weapon is lying. That's why Satan is called the father of lies. In Ephesians chapter 6, it teaches that he shoots his lies at us like they are fiery arrows. And if you have no protection, no evidence of what is true and what is false, you will believe the lie because your heart will make it sound good and you'll follow it. In Ephesians chapter 6, it also teaches us that your protection against lies is the shield of faith. And Romans 10 teaches that faith comes by the word of Christ that's found in the Bible. Now if you know very little Bible, then your faith shield will be tiny. And Satan's arrows will go straight through, play with your emotions, he'll cloud your mind, he'll mess you. you believe Christ's words in the Bible, then your faith shield will be powerful. No matter how tough the battle gets, you will know what is true, you'll know what is false, and you won't be piranha dinner. So, read your Bible. Give your mind the evidence it needs to control your heart. For the Christian, there is no substitute for Bible reading. Some Christians try to substitute Christian music 
or books like Chicken, Sol Chicken Soup for the Soul, but it doesn't work. We don't need soup, we need meat. We need the meat of God's Word, and that's the Bible. So read your Bible today, and read your Bible every day.